All right, we're going to go over this paper, which was uh, submitted as part of a group project. So uh, the assignment is clearly identified. The course is identified. The topic is identified. Uh, is it fair for to require individuals to purchase health insurance? The answer for this team was yes. Uh, the team number is identified. The date is given. So the instructor... Uh, can easily grade this. They knew who submitted it and uh, what their uh, objective is in submitting this. They know what their decision is on this debate topic. The first paragraph uh, is quite lengthy, as you can see, and it introduces the topic. Now, this is often done in papers where the first paper or the first uh, paragraph will be an introduction to the topic. So that's perfectly fine. The Affordable Care Act is a United States Health Reform Act, a law that was passed in 2010. The law has multiple provisions um, that plan to expand health care um, to millions of Americans, increase benefits to consumers, lower costs, etc., etc. And this sentence is okay, um, as stated, and you see that it has a reference at the end in parentheses, which is uh, following the uh, MLA style. The only thing that's maybe slightly uh, a bit of a red flag or something is it doesn't exactly sound like an undergraduate sentence. It sounds like it might have been actually lifted word for word from some other source, maybe even that website. So uh, let's take a look at the website. It's important that it be listed in the references. And it is. And I did go to the website. And no, it's not a case of... Uh, plagiarism or illegitimate lifting of uh, words and phrases. This is actually a compilation of some phrases and some other th information that was on that site. So it is a compiled information, which is basically a paraphrase from information on the site. So that's fine. And it helps uh, the reader understand what the provisions of the bill are. You'll see here that uh, has an interesting detail. The bill, the whole act actually has two parts to it, the PP, uh, ACA, and the uh, Health Care and Education Reconciliation Act, which is talked about here. And you see the comments here, that's interesting. And we clearly define the issue. And you have a good enumeration of the issues that are involved. So that first paragraph is uh, quite good, the way it stands. And then we have something which in other cases might have been the first paragraph. If you don't have, you, don't, you feel you don't need this introductory stuff. Uh, there has been much political debate on whether it is fair to require individuals to purchase health insurance. There are arguments that requiring individuals to purchase health insurance is taking away their freedom of choice. Precisely. This is a very good um, definition or, or statement of what, the issue is on one side. On the imposing side, many people argue that without health insurance, that people without health insurance are costing the government and insured individuals billions of dollars. Correct again. So um, this way of stating the two opposing sides is really good. Uh, you should do that at the beginning of your paper, uh, particularly if it's a debate issue. Um, now, uh, here is the thesis statement, which uh, every instructor is always looking for in a paper. Near the beginning, uh, it says, For the purpose of this assignment, I am on the side of, yes, it is fair to require individuals to purchase health insurance. You notice the comment the instructor made clearly stated. But this is very important, too. For the purpose of this assignment. In other words, the student is saying, I don't know what the right answer is, maybe, or, you know, and I don't care. <laughs> and also, uh, the instructor should know that, that this is an exercise. This is not a, going to be a political statement, a political diatribe, a moral posturing. Um, this is an exercise. And so I think the student being very, very clear about that uh, is very helpful to uh, a paper like this. So, we go through the arguments here. The student uh, presents, or the group rather, presents all of this information that they use. They've used some resources on the internet. They've cited them using uh, MLA format. Uh, here, the instructor has said this is clearly stated, good information. 
Uh, a lot of instructors, myself included, will write these comments on the papers even if the student is not going to see these comments, as is sometimes the case in online education. Here's a reference good point, important point. Uh, the individual mandate also benefits the insured and healthcare professionals. Now this student has put the this statement at the beginning of a paragraph, meaning it's a topic sentence for the paragraph, and that it's a, a thesis that deserves some attention in their argument. So that's uh, wisely done and well written. So we get to the end. Um, again, the, you expect the summary uh, statement in the last paragraph. Many individuals have different opinions regarding the individual mandate or whether or not it should be required. There are good points on both sides, but requiring the individual mandate will help decrease uncompensated care, and you see the writer left out a word here, and will provide affordable, available, and reliable care for all individuals. So that's the reason that, the main reason that the uh, arguer, the presenter, the writer, the group, has cited uh, on the yes side of this uh, proposition. So, the paper is clear. It has good resources. You see that there's quite a number of resources listed in the references. And uh, it's well organized. It has a clear point of view. And so, um, you know, what are you going to do as an instructor? Well, as we've said many times, uh, the instructor wants to give you uh, the highest grade that they can. Um, you know, there's a couple of, of points here where you, you know, might have taken off a little bit, but uh, it's a really good paper. So that's how instructors look at papers, or at least that's one example of how an instructor might look at a paper.